Hello there everybody, this is Alex from Hardcore Guides, bringing my guide for Dead Space on Impossible Difficulty. Today we are doing Chapter 9, entitled Dead on Arrival. This chapter is my least favorite chapter of, like, very few. I think this is only my least favorite chapter. I think this is the only one that I would consider not liking to play very often. Um, most of the time, it's usually just like maybe like a section or two, but I think the entirety of the chapter just kind of bugs me a lot. And it's mainly because of the whole fire puzzle situation that we come up to later, and and then we're also on, like, I think a different ship, or a different part of a ship, um, since like last time we took out that slug, I believe in this episode, I think we're doing the, well in this chapter, uh, we're going to the actual ship that it was, I think, taking over. And then we're gonna, you know, go clean up the little mess over there. And of course that just ends up blowing things up. Um, I don't have any other way to explain why I don't like it that much. It's tough. Uh, maybe it's just because there's just a little too many puzzles, maybe? I don't know. I mean, that's usually not a big problem of mine, anyway. I don't mind Dead Space puzzles, it's just... You know, I'm kind of here for the action. Uh, for the most part. I know puzzles break the pace, but for me, I just kind of like to get to things and get them done with, you know? Granted, this puzzle right here is not that bad. Most of Dead Space puzzles are not that bad, except for like maybe like the satellite one. I just... If you like it, you like it. I don't, personally. I'm not saying it's bad bad, I'm just saying like... It's not objectively bad, I'm just saying that I subjectively think it's not very fun. Uh, so, yeah, once you start this whole, you know, process going, of course... A bunch of enemies are going to spawn, and there's going to be like, you know, a, a lurker or two, and then a leaper. I don't know what I'm doing. If I didn't notice the leaper or not, I don't know. Speaking of not knowing what they were doing, I have no idea why he decided to jump and make himself a relatively easy target. But that's just the fun randomness of Dead Space in general. So, this puzzle, of course, you know, really straightforward, really simple. You just grab these radioactive balls and then shoot them down the, the you know, the thing here, um, the opening here. I, I, I can't <laughs> think too much. It's been a long day, um, and on top of that, this is like my second video today that I am going to hopefully render and upload. I actually uploaded and rendered episode 8 on this very same day, and it didn't take as long as I thought it would. Uh, it, it normally does. But, yeah. So, a couple of super leapers, uh, you know, spawn, and I just do what I do best. Just stasis and then use force gun. Because force gun is really good against, especially the super variants of Necromorphs. It might not look like it, but that certainly took just enough ammo to kill him. Kind of pretty much what I expected the amount to be. And something else I think I haven't really mentioned too much is I usually don't go for air upgrades very often in Dead Space and the reason why is because usually they have a lot of O2 around. I know it's a pain to have to go back and grab it and it's just easier and just more safer to have air on hand. Of course you can always have like an air canister on hand too but uh, when it comes down to it I don't really ever bother too much because I kind of know how much air I need at the time and get away with it. And luckily enough Isaac does give you a bit of a warning while he's getting close to being suffocated and, and, you know, losing oxygen to kind of just, you know, give you a heads up like, hey, I'm about to die. So, you know, that's a good, good method there. And of course, knowing where the O2 tanks are is always very helpful. And luckily, most, if not all these zero oxygen areas kind of just give you, you know, like an oxygen tank uh, around there somewhere. So... That's always nice. But yeah, that part, I wouldn't even say that's even anywhere near what I would consider hard by any means. I, I don't know. I, I personally don't feel like that section's that hard. But coming up, though, um, things are about to get a little bit rough. And this is where I think the game starts to get a bit more taxing in, like, mostly just, like, this chapter and maybe, like, the next one. Um, hold on. The one with the marker. Chapter 11? If I'm not mistaken on that, I think. The one where you're moving the marker across the bridge, I think that's chapter 11. That one, I would also consider a pretty, pretty hard chapter, but when I say hard, I mean, like, 
nah, you know, like, not like, oh, wow, you know, I cannot beat this. This is literally impossible. I mean hard in, in the sense of, like, oh, yeah, that was a little bit challenging. I just kind of had to, you know, rework the way I did things to figure it out, but it wasn't that bad. So that's usually what I consider Dead Space at in terms of difficulty. I kind of just see it alongside the, the same level of difficulty as I would say Resident Evil 4, kind of, in a way. Maybe like a smidge harder, but not by too much. Just enough. But that's just my own personal reflection on it. I, I don't find Dead Space 1 too hard. I find Dead Space 2 much harder in a lot of areas. Just because of like the enemy variety and the change in enemy uh, mannerisms and speed that kind of make them a, a bit tougher to deal with. It's not much of a change, but it's subtle enough to where, especially when you play Zealot mode, you kind of start to understand, like, okay, these guys have been upgraded to be a little bit tougher. So, coming up, uh, you know, you got the stasis enemies, and of course in the remake, they have a thing on their suit that they wear that you can shoot and cause stasis to erupt around them. However, these ones do not have that. So, what I do in order to take out stasis enemies is I usually just use force gun. Uh, once again, I, you know, I'm basically just beating a dead horse, repeating myself constantly, but that's just the truth. I, I have to, you know, I like to say what's going on. Because I'm weird like that. But, yeah, I just use force gun. That's, that's my go-to weapon on that one. Uh, mainly because it kind of just stops them and it kind of stuns them a bit. And if you're able to get a good hit... Because you, you notice that they do tend to dodge, and I don't think they dodge too often. I think they dodge, like, one shot. Or at least they dodge, like, your, your sight on them. And then after that, you can shoot them in the legs. Shooting them in the legs would be more important. I mean, I know that kind of goes without saying, but still. Uh, by now, I would also recommend having Force Gun Speed upgraded just enough. At least one bar. That way, you can hopefully not get clipped. Like I did. Uh, by that, you know, by that little bastard. And of course, staying as far back and just, you know, doing some damage from distance with Plasma Cutter or whatever would also, you know, come in handy too. But this is the actual first introduction of these enemies. I don't know why they need to appear this far. But then again, I think story-wise, I think they have a reason why. I think it's because since we're on a different ship, that's why I think, because they have probably like a different type of crew that may be more specifically tied to like stasis stuff. Um... So it does make sense in that regard, but granted, you could also maybe throw this section earlier in the game and would have been fine. Because this is Death Space 1, after all, because like everything's divided into chapters. But yeah, you see right there, um, I did two shots on the stasis enemy, but I was really close. And that's the thing to keep in mind, too, is with these guys. I know I said stay far away, but, you know, do whatever you want, of course. But granted, if you're using force gun, you pretty much can't. You kind of have to wait for them to show up unless you use grenade shot. But th I wouldn't recommend using grenade on on them, just in case, because they tend to avoid a lot of uh, a lot of shots, so I, I wouldn't mess with that too much, but, you know, they do get close. Force gun works pretty well, and like I just said, I, I two-shotted the enemy, so it all kind of worked out pretty well. And I died here, uh, mainly because of ne or necromorphs, yeah, exactly. I died here mainly because of an effector, and I think there's one. I think there's one infector, maybe two. Yeah, there's there's the one. There's the first one. So he shows up right behind you, and he immediately goes for the first dead body that he sees. So he's just cutting in line like they do at CC's. <laughs> Which, I know, it's not a bad thing. Yeah, there was two. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the second one, of course, I just launched some, you know, force shots on him. Because my force gun, at this point, I think I have, like, a couple nodes worth of damage. So it's doing relatively decent damage. And this is the part where, like, my force gun starts becoming relatively close to my main damage dealer almost uh and this is you know going back to what i said in, like in a previous chapter like chapter one or chapter two or whatever it was where i mentioned that like the force gun eventually gets to the point where it can do like two shots on an enemy and kill him and that's what i'm basically referring to of course is this specific part right here like late game i am now doing like two shots up close to enemies and that's pretty good that's something i would i would highly recommend investing in too um, but, of course, once again, you know, if you're running Pulse Rifle or whatever and you feel more comfortable with that, that's completely okay. Because, you know, by now, most likely, if, if you, like, if you make it this far to, like, Chapter 9, you're probably confident in your skills on taking down enemies. It's just, like, 
you know, maybe the best like, advice I can give you is, like, certain tips on, like, areas that have, say, a ton of enemies or something like that. Um, that would, you know, maybe find, like, some spots to hide in, too, because... Or, even for that matter, just knowing enemy spawns in general could also help. Um... But yeah, so in this room, uh, this is a fun little room, you know, we're gonna of course have to deal with another, another divider again. And I just, you know, force all the uh, little critters. But do be careful because these guys are gonna spawn and that's why I, I hunker down in, into this room. It's because I know in this little small room that they can't pretty much spawn in here. So speaking of getting a good spawn uh, advantage, this is definitely one of them. So you see I'm getting them all grouped up. By the way, I recommend using less ammo than I did there, but you know, I was just trying to use grenade for some reason to kill them when I could just used my plasma cutter, but maybe I was trying to save ammo. It's it was a couple weeks ago, I don't remember, but yeah, once like these five or six or however many of war are taken out, I think there's like w another one that does spawn, either that or it's a stasis one. I feel like somebody else spawns in this room, but it looks like I'm wrong on that one, so that's good. Okay, so it was just the divider and just the explosive uh, enemies. So, in this room, there's, of course, going to be this shootout. And I'm going to skip all the beginning rounds and just show you the final round. Just to give you an idea of what, I'm, what I've been doing the entirety of this. And it, it's a fun little minigame for the most part. Round 5 or whatever round this is. I mean, this yeah, this is level 5. Yeah, okay. So, this is like the last level, I believe. You get a power note at the very end. And, um... I'm pretty sure this is the last round. If not, oh well. I, I'm, if not, then I'm just at least going for the power node. But I just show you when I win and go all my way, my merry way. There might be a level six. I think there might be, and it might be like a schematic, or it might be a semiconductor. But that might have been before that. But regardless, um, after all is said and done, you know, I get my power node, and move on. I, I don't, I don't really have any need. To probably show you how to properly do that. There's plenty of videos I probably could. Uh, but I don't really have much of a secret besides I just use Plasma Cutter. I wouldn't recommend using Pulse because it does a burst shot first. And that could take up some time. Unless you have like a speed upgrade. That might help. Um, I just use Plasma Horizontal Shot. Because I feel like Vertical Shot might miss more than often. And I have a very specific spot that I stand in while I'm aiming. To kind of get a view of the entirety of the shooting gallery to, to go from there. So coming into this room, uh, Stasis guy's gonna show up and he's gonna die by the laser, of course. And it's just showing you like, hey, don't run into this, you'll die. And it's like, I know. And then I proceed to run into it and die. So <laughs> that happens every once in a while. Um, but yeah, there's gonna be one Stasis guy and then one after, once you make your way through. And of course, I'm a little bit of a greedy bastard and I like to go get items and such that are on the side. Also, notice how I'm just tanking hits at this point. I have tons of, of health packs on standby just in case because I never really used them. And something else that you could do that you can incorporate into your gaming session of Dead Space, you know, while you're drinking your, you know, your white monster or whatever the hell that thing was called. I, I forget, but the boomer drink, you know. You know the one. Um, if you're drinking one of them things, or maybe like some Mountain Dew or something, you know, good old-fashioned gamer juice, as they call it, uh, then, uh, give me a sec. My brain just froze. It literally froze for a second. Uh, something must stay. Oh, yeah, health packs. So, if you wanted to, you could always just die or restart the checkpoint. Like, there's no harm, no foul in the possible mode. There's really nothing to it. Also, I stay down here near the node, uh, because the enemies just kind of spawn ahead of me. Nothing special besides just I stay down here to kind of just stay far enough back to get some shots on them and stuff. Nothing through that door. I don't. I think we go through that door later. I think that might be the exit out of here. But yeah, I, I saved up all my heavy uh, med packs mainly just because um, I never wanted to really use them. I use like the smaller ones first, more so than I do with the heavy ones. And I usually don't buy them either. You just kind of find them. I just kind of keep them around. They tend to give you plenty. And also, I, I also tank a lot of the hits. Well, not like every single hit, but like there, there's a few hits I can tank because of my suit being like level 5 or whatever it is now. Which I think by now, I think we have level 5 suit. I, 
I, I think so. Because you don't get level 6 suit until you do New Game Plus. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. So, this little room might give you a bit of a headache if you're not prepared. So, right around this corner, of course, you know the lighting is going to change. And it's going to spawn a pregnant. And this is the first pregnant, at least I think it's one of the first few, that tend to spawn lurkers. And I would much rather fight lurkers than swarmers. So, what I do here is I just stay in this back corner. I don't bother with going too far up because, to me, it's just a little too dangerous. And... I try to use the graph panel in front of me as a sort of suedo thing to kind of knock them into. And this is another one of those situations where, like, if you're kind of close to the graph panel uh, and you've got force gun or any gun that pushes enemies, you could just use that and just push them into the graph panel. That is something that you can do. It's just for some silly odd reason I didn't think about it at the time. I think I was just too worried about getting the kills. But yeah, of course, you know, we got these guys. And luckily for us, you can stasis them. You don't have to uh, worry about them being too fast and you can't take them out. But yeah, I just kind of stay back here because a lot of the enemies just tend to kind of spawn way down the far uh, end of this, you know, corridor here. So I just don't really bother with them. And whenever they get too close, just I use force gun and just blast them to death. Now, like I said, I should have taken the advantage and just pushed them into the wrath panel. That would have been smart, but um, I, I didn't do that. Because I'm... I'm weird like that. I think he got killed by it. I think he... Yeah, he got... He got blasted by it because he jumped right into it. So... That's another thing, too. Like, even if you can't push them yourself, you could always just kind of, like, stand... adjacent from it to kind of... make them hopefully run into it. Because I don't think they ever really avoid it unless they're far enough away. Because you saw earlier, like, the... Stasis guy... Which name I cannot remember. You saw earlier that, um, of course, he avoided the grab panel. So, that's something to keep in mind. This is another reason why, right here, I love the plasma cutter. It just has such a huge range to it. It's just... It's so good. I like the plasma cutter a lot. and In, in my opinion, the damage does kind of fall off late game by, like, a small bit. Uh... Not by much, but, like, it's just enough to where, like, I start noticing that the force gun is doing, like, two shots. And then the plasma cutter is just not doing as much as I kind of want to. Unless it's, like, on lurkers and stuff. But I think it's more so toward, like, the super slashers and stuff. The super variants that it starts to kind of rough up. Get rough around the edges for plasma cutter. But then again, maybe that's just my own psychosis just thinking that it's wearing down and then somebody's gonna if they find this video in the future they might say like no that's not true you're a, you're a dead space amateur and it's like that's fair <laughs> that's fair I, I don't know all the stats and statistics about this game and all that other fun stuff I, I don't know the absolute of it I'm just here to kind of play and have fun so that's what that's all about looks like I might have the level 4 suit by now um, I think this one might be the one that's equipped because I don't see a level 5 suit in there that's been bought. You might not get that one until maybe after this chapter. Or even maybe during it. I'll have to find out. Alright, so that takes care of that part. Even though I said this was my least favorite chapter, and it's mostly just because of these. It's these damn hallways. I just hate running through them all the time. And it's the next section that pisses me off too. But, realistically speaking, um, that section with the horde mode that we got out of, I think that's a pretty fun fight. I will give it credit and say that's that's actually a fight that I do like. And now, um, we're going to have the God of War situation where a guy is going to be running away from us. Even though he's not running away from us, particularly. I don't think so. He's still running away. Sorry, if you don't hear me talk, it's usually because I'm yawning uh i just ate so i'm a, I'm a bit tired <laughs> i need to work out a little bit when i get done with this video uh, i need to get get some of that energy back or something or just work it off you know man it sucks it sucks being tired i hate it i don't know why i didn't bother just cutting out this beginning part i thought i did but i guess i didn't i must have missed one then um but yeah i did die and, okay, so I just got all the items again. 
Sorry about that, but yeah, I did die, and now we're gonna be heading our way. Through the puzzle. So. Oh, man. I am really tired. Yeah, I think that might be it for today. <laughs> that might be the last episode of today. It's only like 7.50, too, and it's like... What the hell, you know? Also, do be careful about um, where you stop the object at, because... If you even see an inch of fire on that, you might want to avoid it. You can shoot these, but I just don't bother with... Well, except for this one, I guess. He was being an ass, so I just did that. And the thing that kind of bugged me about this part is you have to go back with it. You can't just run straight to the end and just be fine. You have to run back with it, and it sucks. Or walk back, I should say. And it's like, that's not fun. And also, do be careful like these pipes that just tend to show up around randomly. Um, but yeah, if you can smack the light, then just do that. You usually have enough time to smack them. I recommend just not wasting ammo on it. Just, just an off chance. I know I said before that ammo, ammo is relatively lenient for the most part. Um, every so often, it seems. Various sections are very lenient, while others just seem to be kind of very scroogey with it, or whatever. Very selfish. Um, but that all just kind of depends. Like, the, 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 the ah. Like, the Leviathan fight, for example, you know, it just eats your ammo, man. It really eats your ammo. I mean, hell, even the hive mind, for the most part, does too, kind of. Although, at that point in time, you probably have enough ammo and damage to actually just do enough to it, and they, you know, it does spawn some creatures that you can fight. Look at this little creature. So, yeah, uh, this area, there's an item in the back, and I either forget to grab it or I just now grab it. And then after that, there's gonna be a brute. Who, of course, you know, is gonna get into trouble, so. Uh, first thing that I do is I just kinda just force gun grenade shots to the front, because it seems to do some damage. Uh, probably not that as much as I kinda hope it will, but it does enough to, like, kinda stun them, so I can just kinda mess with them a little bit. And I believe this one should do a decent bit of damage, I think so. I'm not exactly making the best contact with the grenade itself, but... For the most part, for what it's worth, it seems to be okay. And also, once you run out of stasis, uh, if you're about to run out of stasis, you still have a pack left, I would recommend just use stasis on the brute, and then, after that, use um, the pack while he's stasis, so you don't get grabbed. But yeah, it seemed like the force gun did enough damage, so if you want to waste your force gun shots like I did, then that, that's, that's all up to you. But, uh... I have no specific tips besides what I've given before in previous chapters about how to deal with a brute. And since he's a super one, like, the most it matters is just the fact that he does... He either does more damage, and he also just takes more damage, so... I think they probably do more damage. I think so. That's... Sounds likely. But, um... I don't know what I'm doing waiting around. I could have died! Actually, probably not. I don't think you can die there. You probably could. Oh my kid, You probably could. This is Dead Space. It's all about killing you off when it gets a chance. Alright, so this is another part of the section I don't like, is having to run back and have to do all this stuff. Also, look at the game pushed me forward. That's what scares me about Dead Space 1 the most. Both OG and the remake is, if something's going to happen, then it's probably going to happen, it seems. It seems like a glitch is just right around the corner just waiting to hit me with something, you know? Every time without fail. At least in the remake. OG seems to be at least a little bit okay with that, but sometimes they kind of hit you with something you don't like, so. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Um, I didn't want to have to mute the mic for that. Oh, hang on. <clears throat> yeah, alright, so. This is uh, pretty close to the end of the game, and I'm trying to think of what Chapter 10 is like. The top of my head, I'm kind of fainting on it. I have an idea. I want to say it's the church. But I could be wrong. That seems, that seems kind of early for that. I think we've already done the church stuff. Well, like, I, I, the crew deck, I mean. I, mean, I meant to say the crew deck. Yeah, we did do church stuff earlier, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, upon coming in here, of course, you got another stasis guy, so just watch out for him. 
uh, take them out, you know, as you normally do with these assholes. And then I guess I have enough modes to make a, make a weapon. I guess we're going to go use our crafting table and make an iron sword or something. So, okay, I don't make anything. <laughs> I get a wooden sword. All right, cool. Um, but, yeah, I guess I'll be the end of the episode, and I'll see you guys for the next chapter. So, as always, take care, everybody.